In this video presentation, we're going to be taking a look at a summary of the OSI model and what we've been talking about here for this entire series. Now, in all fairness, we did what could be construed as a 35,000 foot flyover of the OSI model. There's a whole lot more information involved in the OSI model. And if you're going to be taking any type of Cisco exam certification, you're going to have to know the OSI model front and back. You're going to have to know it in great detail. And I don't care if it's for the CCNA, the CCNP, or the CCIE exam, or any other Cisco exam. They're going to ask questions about the OSI model, and you're going to have to know it very well. Now let's start off by looking at the top of the OSI model, which is layer 7. Uh, the network processes to applications occurs here, provides network services to application processes such as electronic mail, file transfer, and terminal emulation. So what are some of the programs that operate up here? Word processing programs, file transfer programs. We have SMTP, POP3, FTP, TFTP, WWW browsers all work up here at this layer. And remember that the application layer is not like any of the other layers in that it does not provide any services for any other layer of the OSI model, only for applications that work outside of the OSI model. Going on down to the presentation layer, layer 6, data representation ensures that data is readable by the receiving system, configures the format of the data, provides data structures, negotiates data transfer syntax for the application layer. And what works here is the formats of audio and video. We have MIDI, we have JPEG, MPEG, the GIF. Also remember that data compression, decompression, encryption, and decryption all work here at the presentation layer. Let's take a look at layer 5. The inner host communication takes place here, it establishes, manages, synchronizes, and terminates sessions between applications. That all takes place here at the session layer. Make sure you know this, okay? Also know that DNS, NetBIOS, uh, NFS all work here at this particular layer. All right. Going on down to layer four, the transport layer. This is what allows us to have end-to-end -end connections, reliable connections, assured connections using TCP. Some of the protocols that reside here are TCP, SPX, and IPX. It also provides data transport reliability, establishes, maintains, and also terminates the virtual circuits. All happens here at the transport layer, fault detection and recovery, as well as error detection. Information flow control happens here, as does windowing which is provided by the protocol TCP. Let's get on down to the network layer. The address and the best path selection takes place here at the network layer. Provides connectivity with the path selection between two end systems. Domain of routing takes place here. Some of the primary protocols, IPX, IP, now remember when we talk about networking that everything we do up to this point is in the support of actual networking or the routing on a network. We are in the support of IP. That's what we're all about. You don't network without being able to move information from one network segment to another one. That is what networking is or what routing is. Okay? What, what particular type of devices work here? The router, the B router. That all works here. Now the upper layers, the transport layer, the session layer, the presentation and application layers, all deal with gateways. Okay, if you was to see that on a, a, um, as a question, you would know that. All right, let's take a look at the data link. The data link, access to media, provides reliable transfer of data across the media, physical addressing, network topology, error notification, flow control. Remember, this is where error notification takes place at the data link layer, but it's the transport layer that has the services to provide error correction. Physical addressing, also known as the MAC addressing, takes place here. This is how we find nodes and provide nodes with uniqueness on our network. 
all done here at the sublayer of the data link known as the MAC sublayer. Remember that there's another sublayer here called the LLC, the logical link control. And then we have the physical layer, binary transmission of information, zeros and ones, bits and bytes, all happens at this layer. We go out the NIC card, we hit the wire, we go across the wire, come up to the next interface, and then we start this de-encapsulation process. Wire connectors, voltage, data rates, anything you can touch down here at the physical layer is what this particular part of the OSI is all about. Well, that concludes our presentation on the OSI model. And remember that there's a whole lot of information out there on the wonderful world that we know of as the Internet. Go on out, open up Google or whatever other search machine you like to use, and just type in the OSI model, and you're going to get more information that you can probably dissect. Okay, But you need to get as much information as you can about the OSI model because Cisco is big on it.